I'm still waiting for my aeroplane. It's been a bit late boarding, so I should have stayed at the hotel and had a, had a bigger breakfast. Anyway, uh, I thought I'd just record a little bit about a maybe important question is how can you trust the scientists in what they're saying? Because I'm, I'm not sure it's obvious for people who don't work in science. So how do you know if you, if you hear a report of some new invention or some, some new discovery, is it right or is it complete rubbish? And I think the most important thing to look for is um, when you see a report, has it been published in a scientific journal, or in what we call a, a peer-reviewed journal? Because the way that science sort of monitors itself, essentially, is it's a self, self. Um, it's got its own jury, internal jury. Is that if you write up a piece of work, you send it to a scientific journal, then the journal editors send it to at least normally two other scientists and they are anonymous, um, so you, you can never get to know who it was who judged your paper, but they get to read through it, and they're normally experts in the field themselves that the journal picks out. And so they'll read it in detail, and they'll kind of send back comments saying either, quite often, this is rubbish, don't publish it, or maybe this is, this is such a minor advance that it's not worth publishing. Otherwise they can say, yeah, it's good, but there's some fundamental flaws here and here that just uh, forget it until, they, until the authors sort this out. What you often get is, um, it's good, but have they checked this? They maybe um, they'll mention other references that you as a scientist didn't know about and saying, um, the worst is if you get something saying, sorry, but this has already been published. Have you, have you, and because we're the best one in the world, you can search with the various databases for the articles and sometimes you miss them and somebody's published something really similar already to what you've done and that's, that's a, that's a, that's a killer. So yesterday I was reviewing a, obviously I can't on camera say what the subject was, but I was, I was reviewing a paper that's now come back, um, several times between me and the authors because they were, various things that I felt that they hadn't really ad addressed properly in the paper. I mean, I, I think the idea is that work that's fundamentally good at the basis, like this was, um, but there were, there were aspects that they maybe hadn't thought of or they, they, they glossed over which were really important for interpretation of the final results. So it's gone backs and forwards a few times and finally now I think it's, it's ready to be published and the paper's a lot better and it's more robust and more defendable. If it was published as it was to start with, any scientist reading would say, yeah, it's interesting, but they haven't you can't use those results on their own, it needs these other sections. So that's, it's a kind of filtering mechanism, I mean, I don't know of any other really good way of doing it, it's who watches the watchman. The only, the people best qualified to judge scientific work is other scientific experts in the field, and by making it anonymous, it means that you can maybe say things that, you, particularly as an English guy, I'd maybe rather not say to people's faces from a, a sense of politeness and decorum, but assume that the scientists are fundamentally honest if they put a graph in a paper with data points, experimental data points. For me as a referee, I've got no way of telling I mean, if, if they just drawn them on with a pen. I mean, I could tell that it was a pen, but apart from that, it would be very hard to tell that the data was made up. There are ways to check statistically, you know, and that happens from time to time, and there's been obvious big cases in the news like the stem cell researchers and some of the other um, in the semiconductor field. There was a guy in, in America not so long ago. But in general, I mean, given the number of papers published, I think it works reasonably well as a system. So, a summary, if you, if you see some report in the newspaper and some scientist or somebody and it's not been peer-reviewed, be doubly, doubly suspicious. Because why didn't they put it into peer review first? When they could have done, that's the way it works. Have they got something that they think isn't very robust in it? And then after that, you put all the other questions, particularly if it hasn't been peer-reviewed, like who's funding the research and where does it come from? And if you haven't read it, and you can, um, you're okay with English, then I recommend you have a look on the Guardian website. There's a column called Bad Science, which is uh, it's a, it's a breath of fresh air. Um, every week, um, the guy pulls apart um, science stories in the news which are, which are misleading or um, just basically rubbish. And, uh, and there's an awful lot of stuff. I mean, you, you see some of these. He did a great piece not so long ago, and these stories about... Um, I'm trying to not be specific. The, the best day in the year to drink soft drinks or whatever it is and apparently these guys in the, in the um, publicity machines for large companies prepare press releases with basically all the scientific results on and then shop around finding scientists who are willing to put their name on this and call it research which is disgusting it's, uh, it's an abuse of the trust in scientists that because um, trust in what we do is, is essential if people and other scientists don't trust scientists we, I mean, we need to be impartial, we need to be independent, That's, they're the, the bedrock of what we do. Um, 
it's, it's impartiality and sharing, communication, anything that destroys or breaks these things down, I'm, I'm not. So you won't find me um, promoting drinking particular soft drinks on February the 25th because it makes his skin less wrinkly.